Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So, are you like me and are you wondering how much goes into the world of bug bounties? Are you like me and wondering how much goes into public bug bounties versus private versus vulnerability disclosures? So let's find out, shall we? Because I was snoozing around and I found this really cool document, the fourth annual Hacker Powered Security Report, the study on hacker powered security ecosystem by Hacker One. And while this is an excellent, excellent report, I'd like to just go over a few key features with you guys and then I'll link it in the description below as well. So first of all, this is the 2020 report. Now let's look at the key findings here. We can see that a average has been paid for critical vulnerabilities, uh, sorry, for critical vulnerabilities increased to 3,650 euro dollars, 3,100 euros or 25,000 yen. In the past year, for critical vulnerabilities, that is bad. Like, Jesus Christ, you're preventing some really bad stuff and you're paying the uh, research of $3,650. That is sad, to say the least. Uh, up 8% year over year, so that means that it was even lower in 2019 and the average amount paid per vulnerability of any level is $979 or 831 euros or if you want it in yen, 6,834 6, yen, up 9% from last year's average. Okay, next number we have is more than $44.75 million uh, in bug bounties were awarded to hackers across the globe over the past year. So that was, of course, the year of 2020. And that brings the total over $100 million with a year over year increase of 87%. That is really good, of course. The more, the better, but we need to invest much, much more, though. Of course, in May 2020, this was passed, so I imagine in 2022, it's a lot higher. We'll get more into that later. Then we have the United States who remains the top payer of bug bounties with 80% of the total, but that share is decreasing. So we can see globally that there is more market share for bug bounties with a year over year uh, increase for Spain of 4,324%. That's massive, of course. Brazil also big and China both in the 1,000 plus percent. Then we have the 100 countries, so an increase in year over year hacker earnings with the biggest team in China, Spain and France with 582%, 307% and 279% respectively and also Turkey of course at 240%, 14. In a dozen, a dozen countries hackers started earning awards for the first time. Really good of course, that, is, that needs to be more, every single country should have enough hackers I think. Um, nine individuals have now earned over nine, one million dollars. Again, 2020 numbers. I imagine that to be much higher now. And that was on the Hacker One platform specifically. And hackers now hail from 226 countries and territories, including Guinea Bissau, Central African Republic, Montserrat, Comoros, Holy See, and San Marino. They've all been added to that list. And if we talk about the deer outbreak with our little virus that we saw in that time period, we can see that $30,000 had been raised for the WHO and that the outbreak saw an increase in 95% of signups, submitted reports increasing by 28% and organizations paid 29% more bounties. Then last bounties for in proper access control, the most awarded weakness type increased by 130% and information disclosure fell to second place with 60% increase in the bug, bug, that our bounties rewarded. So that's a big one, improper access control, that is on the OWASP top 10 if you might remember, OWASP top 10 2021 talks about broken access control on the number one spot and we'll see more about that later. So. Amazing, great report. I'll definitely link it to you guys as well. But if we look on on the industry reports page, I was snoozing around because I find this interesting, of course. Bug bounty readiness assessment questionnaire, also really important, really cool, really important. This is, is your company ready to go into the bug bounty world? 
Um, maybe I'll make a video on it if you guys find that interesting. But this caught my eye. The Hacker Power Security Report Industry Insights of 2021. Now, let's look at that, shall we? Because in here, of course, we can also find a few key features and numbers. Now, this is a really cool put together presentation. By the way, I really like the graphic design. But here we can see, of course, a little bit of uh, an introduction and we can see some growth by 34%. So that is really good. The program growth is 34%, but of course that doesn't say the whole story. That is just the amount of programs increasing. If we see year over year growth, we have a lot of growth in a lot of different sectors, which is also fantastic, of course. Automation is entering the scene, pharmaceuticals is coming in, consumer goods with medical technology, aviation and airspace and government entering the scene uh, with a great year over year increase there. Now, if we look a little bit further, those are really interesting numbers, but that's not really what I'm interested in. This is what becomes more interesting for me. So hackers reported 66,547 valid bugs in 2021, a 21% increase from 2020. Good, 21% increase, great. Then the total bug bounties increased by 10%. The total bug bounties, so the total valid reports. Okay, we have in 2020, 38,863 and in 2021 growing to 42,805. Now the public bug bounty programs have a 2% increase in this bug submitted, which is not a lot at all, if you ask me. And uh, it brings me to wonder, and this is just the opinion of a stupid rat, shouldn't we put more into getting these public programs up as well because from what I've read about their ready assessment their readiness assessment for bug mounties as well they really tend to hammer on the fact that they want to get the good people in the like the good people in your com company for reports and stuff like that they want the good people to be invited to private programs um, all of those things hacker management is important to them which is great and all, of course, but I'm just saying if you get a better inflow of new people, then you might have a better long-term result as well, or you don't have as big of an outflow, because it was found that I think most bug bounty hunters were below 35 years of age. I don't remember where I read it. I think it's one of these reports, but that is young. Like, that just tells me that after a certain age, maybe a lot of... Uh, people who do this as a full-time job or do it and decide maybe they evolve into another thing like pen testing and we'll see more about that later. As for private bug bounties, we see a 16% year-over-year increase there in bugs submitted. So that's good of course, but I'm just hope I was just hoping that this vulnerability disclosure programs number for example there it's great that we have a bigger bigger number but maybe we can shift some of those resources or talk to the resources that provide us with the bug bounty programs themselves aka the companies talk them into the the more paid programs if they already have a vulnerability disclosure program that's great but especially if there's like not a lot of scope in that program uh, then maybe we should add some more scope and if some things are fi found that prove to be critical maybe they should think about upgrading just an idea of course when it comes to pen testing a 264 percent year-over-year increase and as you guys might know hacker one also does a little bit of pen testing so great numbers awesome to see um, we can also see some of their conclusions while well, traditional bug bounties saw a 10% increase in findings in the past 12 months. Vulnerability disclosure program saw 47% vulnerability growth and hacker powered pen tests rose 246%. My friends, we're seeing a significant increase in the percentage of vulnerabilities surfaced from VDPs and pen tests. 
Pentest vulnerability has made up 0.9% of all vulnerabilities in 2020, but it has increased to 3% in the past 12 months, being 2021 of course. Significantly more customers launched Pentest in 2021 than 2020, and they've seen an enhanced customer focus on compliance with security regulations and standards, which is driving the requirement for pen tests. Great evolution, if you ask me. We're also seeing customers bridging the security and development lifecycle with frequent assessments during product or feature releases. They're adding pen tests to their existing continuous security testing programs. As the adoption of hacker-powered solution grows beyond bug bounty, they provide their value not only for meeting regulatory standards, but also for shoring up digital asset security. Those were some really awesome insights. Now, let's just look at the top 10 vulnerabilities that have been reported to HackerOne, shall we? At number one, was cross-site scripting, is still cross-site scripting. 7% increase year over year of the reports there. Then improper access control, that has now been moved to number three. And we have information disclosure still on the number two spot with 58% year over year increase for that. Whereas improper access control only the 26%. Then we also have IDOR on number four now in 2021. With privilege escalation following on number five. Improper authentication is also in there, of course. And we go into code injection. That's a pretty severe bug, of course. SQL injections, they're lowering that amount. And SSRF and business logic errors. Now, two very distinct numbers here. Privilege escalation with a year-over-year -year increase of 55%. And business logic errors even more with 67%. So that is a big newcomer in that list. 13% increase in code injections is also a big problem, of course. Now, if we look at the bounties awarded, we have $36 million in bounties awarded. Remember in 2021 how much that was if we go back real quick 44.75 million dollars so a little bit less there it seems i'm not sure if i'm interpreting this incorrectly but that's why i'm presenting you with all of these numbers as well for cross-site scripting we have four and a half million dollar payout in total information disclosure four and a half million improper access control 4.1 million iDoors 2.6, privilege escalation 2.2, improper authentication 1.9, and code, authentic code injection $1.5 million, SQL injection $1.4 million, SSR $1.4 million, and business logic vulnerabilities $874,000. Now, if you look at the industries that might be interesting for some people, you can still see that the biggest numbers go into the computer software part probably followed by consumer goods because here we have eight uh, sorry followed by <coughs> hardware and peripherals which followed by consumer goods those seem to make up the majority of industries and that was clear as well i don't find this super interesting to look at um, this is per industry again what type of vulnerabilities mostly exist there might be interesting if your company not for me in here we can see a 20% increase in criticals the average paid out for a critical so that's pretty good a high state at a thousand dollars a medium went from 450 to 500 and low state at hundred and fifty dollars those are about the prices for a vulnerability so that should give you an idea of how insanely low this is like three grand a company stands to lose a fuck ton more than three thousand dollars if they have a critical vulnerability a little metric fuck ton but that's none of my business i guess all right so here we have some average bug bounty prices versus median bug bounty prices as you can see the ones in black are the medians 
and then we also have the air uh, sorry yep we have the light ones are the medians i mean so we have the light one here and the light one here those are year over year increases and then we have the average bounty prices in computer software you can see that the average bounty prices and the medians are pretty high and the same for crypto and blockchain of course i would have expected finance to be higher up in here but apparently it's not that higher up or it's not in here uh, if we look at all of this here finance and in uh, insurance that is pretty low about two grand especially for finance if you get something wrong there that is a huge huge problem so we've looked at all of that information now let's look at some average days to remediation information this blows my fucking mind jesus median time to rem remediate 87 and a half days aviation and airspace come on get a grip on it guys medical technology 64.8 days more than two months this vulnerability lays in the open for that amount of time just remind yourself of that you report a critical it can be the median time by the way it can be more than this so 87 and a half days that it's open as a medium insane that's some information for you guys i've been throwing you guys to death with numbers so i'm going to link these reports in the description below that way you can also look at them yourselves and know i'm not bullshitting but this should give you an idea of our industry of how much the average price for a bounty is and what has been found in our industry at what percentages thanks very much everybody for watching i really appreciate your time and i'll see you in the next one bye amazing hackers